Hello, product people. Welcome to the Product for Product podcast, hosted by Matt Green, data advocate and product manager, and Masha Mikanovsky, product leader and author. Our goal is to serve the product community by helping you find products that can help make your work in product management easier. Thanks for joining us on another episode of the Product for Product podcast. Welcome back. Today, we're kicking off our series on UX, UI design, and wireframing. I think some people in product have used these tools. Others have designers that are helping them with these. Either way, as a product manager, I think getting into design tools is a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and hop in. How are you doing, Mache? I'm good. How are you, Matt? I'm doing good, really good. Summer's, uh, summer's uh, winding down and uh, weather's Way too fast. Now. Yeah. Way too fast. It went very, very quickly. So, <laughs> uh, as, as always, the summer does. Yeah. So I, mm-hmm. I, I started sensing fall in the air. Uh, yeah, it's coming in slowly but surely. So, yeah, but everything's but hey, going well. If if everyone is listening to this show later, um, you know, in the winter, then um, just uh, we are sending you some warm waves from yes uh, <laughs> from the middle of the summer. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully we warm. <laughs> hopefully we warm you up in those cold days. Yeah, that's uh, the nice thing about podcasting. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you mentioned it in the intro about um, product managers using those tools or not. And we also, when we uh, were planning this series, we were debating whether we should have two series, one for just the UX UI design mm-hmm. tools um, like Figma or um, Envision or Adobe XP uh, versus um, just tools for wireframing like uh, Balsamic or Lucychart. And um, the thing is that uh, from product management perspective, it, it really depends on your organization and what resources you have right. to, to use and also on your personal abilities. Some product managers, um, you know, our friend uh, Andrew Miller, he started from UX actually. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, and then that's how he got into product management. That's right. Uh, so I'm sure he has the affinity to do the UX himself and maybe also right. the design. I, I don't remember if he did also design like UI or, or just UX. And just for uh, anyone out there, UX, uh, when we talk about UX, we mean user experience. And when mm-hmm. we talk about UI is u- u- user interface. Um, and uh, the user experience is about how the data flows in the application, how a user moves from one place to another place, uh, where we want to make it user-friendly for the user. We want it to be understood to the user where they're going from one place to the other so they're not getting stuck. We want the data to be um, formatted properly um, on the interface, et cetera. But it doesn't necessarily go into the actual you know, graphic design of right. the interface, like the colors and... And, the buttons uh, and stuff, yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So even even in that uh, discipline, uh, there are people that can do both, that are both UX designer and UI designers. Mm-hmm. And there are people that are much better at UX and other people are much better at UI. Um, so this is also lumping things together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and I worked in the past with any type of these of this, uh, people. I think uh, a good UX UI designer are a bit of a uh, unicorn. But um, there are some great people out there for sure. And then wireframing is really only that part of the UX um, experience or the UX flow where uh, we have to design the wireframes of, of the uh, flow of the system and where data is in the pages and stuff like that. Right. So that's why we kind of put it together uh, because we felt that from a product management perspective, if you have those um, UX designers or UI uh, designers, uh, you may do less of wireframing or design overall in general. What you might do is, you know, on the whiteboard, uh, draw some some uh, wireframes with your yeah. designer and then give it to them and then we'll do the, the better work on, on putting it in the system. Clean it up, right. Right. But uh, if you don't have those designers, then you might have to do it all by yourself. Sometimes it is challenging if we, you know, we don't have good um, UX skills or good uh, UI skills. And I think that as product managers, it's first and foremost more important that we have good UX skills rather than UI skills, Mm -hmm. because really um, the UX is what make the the, the system. It's all about the journey, right? Yeah, it's what makes it usable. 
Yeah. UI also make it usable for accessibility, for example, things like that. But in general, the UX make it uh, usable because users can find information they need. User right. can find the actions that they need. The User content. understand what to do next and they're not getting stuck. Right? Yep. So, so that's, that's the reasoning behind why we uh, decided to put it all in one series. <laughs> yeah. I feel like with some of the tools out there, I'm thinking of, you know, I've used Figma in the past and Figma I think can do, you can really do both things in it. You can, mm-hmm. do, you can do more of the high fidelity things that a uh, traditional designer would be doing with prototypes and mockups and stuff. But you can also do some low fidelity things in there. Um, yeah. And yeah. some of the other tools like Lucidchart, I haven't always worked with designers. So I typically, and I'm very visual. So I like to mm-hmm. mock things up and see how things might work. Mm-hmm. And in that way, it gives me a good foundation for then writing up uh, requirements and tickets and stuff like that, because I know Absolutely. how it looks within the UI and how a mm-hmm. user would use it. Um, mm-hmm. So it helps yep. me, it helps formulate my vision of how things work. And yep. it isn't always pretty, like we're saying, but mm-hmm. um, it definitely, and I think it helps communicate that to the business stakeholders and other people like, hey, this is kind of what we're, we're thinking about when you mentioned this uh, this issue. So yeah, it helps, it yeah. helps there. Absolutely. Now, an interesting point is that we talked also in the past about um, no code platforms and with no code platform, you could maybe also do some of these as well because you can build... Um, you know, maybe some pages over there and you can Mm -hmm. uh, create flows. But this is more maybe going to one of the features that some of these systems might have, which is mockups and an actual, you know, hot um, spots on the page where a user can go and click and therefore users can actually move from one page to another page when when we want to test things. Right. So this takes us to one of those features that we might expect to see in this system. So it's not just about the design, but it's also about uh, going into testing your designs. And to test your designs, it's a better thing to give the user something that they clickable than just to so- show them pictures and ha- let them use their imagination about how you move from one to another. Yeah, that's a really good point. Because mm-hmm. if, you, if you, as you watch them use it, seeing how they interact with the screen, seeing how far they have to go to push a button or mm-hmm. what procedure they have to go through to get to the button, or to get to what their their action item, their call to action is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, just trying to see that, showing them something and actually seeing them do it, it, it was definitely a distinction to make. So, good point. yeah, and, and and that's where um, even when we do wireframes, it's actually a good idea to test these wireframes mm-hmm. um, before we go into the design, because uh, once we um, um, have those wireframes. Maybe we also made mistakes about, you know, what what do we think is the best uh, experience for them to have, user experience. So even if there is no pretty design around it, it's still a very good idea to have users and frame it in a way that they understand this is not the final design, but this is more about can they understand, you know, what the system is supposed to do, um, how to move from one place to another, can they mm-hmm. find the data they need to find and all of that stuff. Yeah, and you haven't gone so far down the road to where you've done a prototype and you've created something to where, okay, like this isn't the experience they want. Let's unwind everything and try to start over. You know, it's yeah. a very iterative approach to where you yeah. can do, hey, I did a wireframe, I did a mock-up. Uh, what do you think? And I haven't gone too far down the road. Yeah, pull it back. So, so I think one of the some of the things we'll have to explore in the series when we talk about different products is. How easy it is for a product manager to use and create wireframes? Mm-hmm. And then can the tool also be used for testing those wireframes and what is available for testing? So it's interesting because we have on our list uh, tools like Figma. So mm-hmm. Figma definitely have these functionalities from you know what I know. Um, and we have uh, tools like Lucidchart. And I think there is another tool by Lucid, which is called Lucid Spark. Yeah. I'm not sure what's that's, the difference between them. Well, that's the other thing about it. That's the, so that's their like whiteboarding and collaboration tool. Oh, I see. Yeah. So it's more like a Miro or a Fig, Fig, Fig Jam. Jam. Yeah. Uh, I see. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Now, the, the interesting thing is if you use Miro, and many, many people use Miro, Miro has uh, templates for wireframes as well. And yeah. I'm actually using it right now. I, I don't have a, another wireframe in the system, so I'm using Miro for that. 
And I showed it to a designer and she was very impressed that I was using that. She didn't know even that it's possible. Yeah, I always felt like Miro um, is kind of a hybrid. Is it kind of a hybrid of the two? Um, the thing or, is that with Miro, I'm not sure there is that ability to test my wireframes. Okay. You know, okay. to test them in, in with the hotspots that the user can actually go through them. I think the only way to test it with Miro is to show them the, the wireframes. So I think that's the limitation over okay. there. Unless right. there is something I don't know about Miro. So <laughs> I yeah. might need to explore that. But, um, you know, um, we, we, as always, when we start the series, we're looking for uh, guests that are using these systems. We have already for some of the products, but not for everything. And, and if we have, uh, you know, someone that also is using Miro for that, we'd love to talk with you. So some of the other products that we have in there is um, Envision, um, UXPIN, uh, Balsamic, which uh, many people are using for wireframing, um, Adobe XP. I, yeah. Um, Mural is, is another mural similar, uh, mural, mural type mural, of product. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Again, I don't know if it's possible to do wireframing over there. Uh, and there might be other products that we will find out through our, our process. One of the other things that I'm always looking these days, at least, uh, when, when I'm looking for a product like that is, um, the collaboration aspect. So yes. products that, especially people working remotely and they're not in the office, I think it's really important to be able to do collaboration on the tool itself. That's rather a big deal. Yep. Yeah, yeah, rather than outside the tool. And I can tell you that um, before COVID, way before COVID, um, I was helping my um, in, a, in a company where I worked for um, some years ago, I help the developer, the designers to choose a new, um, to choose their new design system. And um, that was one of the um, make or break uh, features that we had in there because we, there were already some that did that and some that didn't do it. And we chose the one that did it for the collaboration aspect. I think these days, almost, you know, every product that uh, respects itself will have some type of uh, inline collaboration with uh, comments and, and stuff like that. Yeah, that's a huge deal. I'm using Lucidchart now and mm-hmm. we can collaborate on that. So we can build flows and build uh, journeys and then we can all come in uh, and you can see each other within the screen and the page and, and mm. each person can collaborate on it. And it's it's really valuable, especially being fully remote. Yeah, um, it's, a, it's yeah. A really a game changer. Exactly, exactly. And then we didn't even talk about the basics of, you know, how easy it is to use the, these systems. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Um, and, and the, the, the fun thing about this one specifically is that it was designed for designers. Mm-hmm. So the question is, is it really user-friendly or not? Right. Uh, because if you look at um, things like, I think I mentioned online that uh, my main go-to tool in the past to do any changes for designs and stuff like that was paint on on uh, on the windows machine yeah because what i would do i would just do um, a screenshot of my email of my current application whatever it is and then i will make the changes on it like pixel by pixel or square by square to say this is what i want it to be like it was very very simple yeah but on the other end you know uh, there are much more sophisticated system for just graphic design and the problem with those is that for, I would say, someone that is not a graphic designer and then is not initiated with those systems, um, it's very, very hard to learn how to use them. And that's where sometimes I'm worried about these type of systems that, yes, they were designed for designers, but the designers will go through a lot of training to understand those applications. And mm-hmm. then it's almost like their secret sauce, not just their their um, ability to design something properly and, and their knowledge of how to design, but it's also their ability to use these applications. <laughs> right. And then if you think about a product manager having the time to invest in learning a tool like that, yeah, like, exactly. is that really worth it? That's, you know, yeah. You know. And that's why Miro or, or FigJam are so appealing to me because they're very simple to use. Yes. So they're almost like the next generations of paint to yeah. me, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and that's what, and that's very much what what Lucid Chart and Lucid Spark. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, sure about it at first, but yeah, as I've started to use it, it's mm-hmm. it really is quick and easy, and um, you can get mockups done pretty quickly, and it's pretty user friendly. So I, I've enjoyed using it. So mm-hmm. yeah, 
yeah so so that's really where the world is going to i, I believe these things yeah but understanding that simplicity is the right thing and the more complex something is um the, the harder you will be able to get users to use it because that's Especially what i think about like adobe like adobe xd i think adobe, like those kind of things like they're they're specifically around designers i think so yeah yeah uh, that, that can invest that kind of time and energy into it and it's really mm -hmm. slick and nice to use but trying to get everybody on board to use it and use it quickly and get up and running quickly it, it, i think it does have a barrier there yeah absolutely probably another aspect that we will explore is you know, how fast they're updating their systems, you know, with new features or stuff like that and, and things like that. But we, we always explore it for any product that we're looking at. Outside of product analytics, I think this was the one area I was most excited to learn about because I, I, I am creative and I do like to put, like I said, I like to put things down visually to understand things. But I was always kind of like, well, you know, from a whiteboarding experience, is, it, is this like, and I'm thinking maybe of Miro here, but like, from a whiteboarding experience to a design experience, like what is the best solution for product managers, for product teams? How do you get your designers incorporated in there? And I know yeah. we talked to like product teams in the past, product managers in the past, and how do they integrate with your solution? So do they integrate with Jira? Uh, do they, can you upload design documents and tickets and stuff like that? Yeah. So that's yeah. another aspect of it. That's actually a very interesting point because, um, there is, I've seen some integrations between them, those systems to other systems like Jira or, or Slack or other systems like that. Mm -hmm. So how open is their world to other worlds? Yep. Um, yeah, that, that will be definitely something that we'll uh, look into. I, I would also be interested to see, you know, analytics, if there is any analytics associated with them, you know, from your interest, right, on, on, on data analytics. Right. Um, I don't know. I have no idea. I don't, I, I, yeah, I don't either. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I never explored that, but it might be an interesting um, thing to to think about. Yeah, to think about how how the designers and, and product teams are using those tools. Yeah, that's yeah. good. That's a good point. You know, I think these tools are just expanding and growing in, in their in their presence and in, in teams and companies. So that's why I'm excited to learn about them. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah, I, I don't know if there is anything else for us to cover today, um, because um, you know we always uh, on the kickoff we always uh, there is a lot of unknowns for us. Yes, and then, uh, we we learn them as we go. Yes, and I hope we will learn also from the guests, not just about new products, but also about new things to do in the products that we're using that we are using as well, and we never knew that we could do that. So that. That's also one of those things I'm excited about. Right. Yeah. Like I, like I said, like I, you know, maybe I've used two of these tools in the past, but I by no means use them to their full extent. Uh, I'm hoping to learn, learn new things uh, about these tools along the way. Yeah. 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 And we to too. It. Let's see what we're going to learn. Yep. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, looking forward to it. Uh, thank you all listeners. And we'll, uh, we'll be releasing some new shows coming soon. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.